Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege, opportunity, where we can share fellowship with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we submit our mind, we submit our spirits, we submit our whole being to you, Lord. Father, use me in a mighty way. Holy Spirit, let my mouth, my tongue be a pen of a ready writer, writing indelibly in the hearts and the minds of your people. Father, we just want you to know that we are expecting miracles, signs, and wonders. In the name of Jesus, we expect a transformation to take place today like never before. We receive you now. Come down in your full glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. put your hands together one more time. Amen. I want to greet you in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. And just want to introduce the topic of kingdom faith. Say kingdom faith. And if there was a subtitle, I was going to call it faith for sowing and reaping. Faith for sowing and reaping. Say that. Let us turn quickly to the scriptures in Psalm chapter number 110 from verses 1. After that, we will move to Hebrews chapter number 1, 2 to 3, and then we'll talk, read from Luke chapter number 17. Amen. Just to warn you, if you're taking notes, I'm a very word-based man, so everything I say, I've been taught by Dr. Trine, book, chapter, and verse. Amen. So that you can believe the credibility of God's word. Psalm 110, a psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Did you notice that the first word Lord there is spelt in capital letters, L-O-R-D? Am I allowed to walk off the steps, Pastor Daniel? So the Lord is Jehovah. It's Yahweh. Says to my Lord, which is Christ, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Do you see that the psalm is actually talking about Christ on the right hand after ascension? Do you see that? Do you see that the Father is talking about the Christ on the right hand of the Father? And then he says, he will make thy enemies thy footstool. I declare today that from today your enemies will be under your feet. I declare that the enemy of poverty's back has been broken. That in your life you will not have any more lack. Amen. As you apply the word of God. Look how he says this is going to happen. The Lord, Jehovah, shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Say Zion is the church. So God is going to put our enemies under our feet. But the enemies being put under our feet is going to take place through the church. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. I declare that even though the enemies are around you, that you are a ruler. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of Christ, you will dominate where other people struggle. No more will you be scoring under 400 in your examinations. No more will you be thinking of yourself as a beggar, but more of as a ruler. Say, I'm a ruler. He says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness. Thou hast the due of thy youth. Say, I am a youth and I qualify. 
Rulership is not only for the older folk. Rulership is for you and it's for me. Amen. I want you to participate with me. If you like something, say amen. amen. Say my amen. amen. If you enjoy it, I want you to shout out because your declaration of faith as you shout out will cause something to take place in the heavenlies. While you are sitting in your seat, amen, the word of God declared will do a mighty work for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the scripture, Hebrews chapter number 1, verses 2. Hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son. God is speaking to us these days by his Son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. By whom? By Christ. He made the worlds. Everything that God made, he made by Christ, by the word of God. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Everything that God is upholding is by the word of his power. Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 17 verses 5. I'm getting into the word. I just want you to get the scripture as a foundation in you. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. So in other words, everything that Jesus will now say is in relation to the question, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. If you have faith, you will say, I declare today that the sick are going to be healed. In the name of Jesus, the oppressed will be delivered. I declare that if there's something in your mind that you will be healed from that sickness in your mind and in your body if you receive the word of God. I'm told that the Kenyans have patience when it comes to the word. Amen? Is that true? Is that true? So you okay as I'm building up the foundation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is why I want to talk to you about faith. Because if the disciples can ask Jesus to teach him about faith, so shall we need to learn about faith. Amen? Hallelujah. I believe that we are entering an era where the day of his power will be realized before our eyes. I believe that the time where the world has been dominating the church is coming to an end. I believe that Africa is arising. We are seeing a global recognition of the power of the church. Just by the mere fact of what you are doing today, it is indicative of the power and the glory of Christ. Amen. We are going to usher in this day of power by our operation of the faith of God. Amen. Faith is very important to the believer. Faith is a powerful spiritual force. You cannot receive anything from God if you do not operate faith. Every situation in your life is reversible by faith. If you don't like how life is going, you need to apply and operate your faith. Any desired outcome can be established by faith. If you can believe it, you can receive it. And everything that I'm saying to you is based on what God has declared in his word. Now I know we believe in Almighty God and we know that nothing is impossible for the Lord. But there are a few things that God cannot do. Number one, God cannot violate His Word. Psalms chapter number 138 verses 2, it says that God has magnified His Word above His own name. God is not moved by emotion. God is moved by faith. When God was moved by emotion and by his love for you, 
He sent Jesus Christ to die for you. Now that Christ has died for you and I, he's now moved by faith. Number two, God cannot change. If God has said something, that is it. Hallelujah. If God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. The Bible says thy word is forever settled in heaven. God will never refrain or retract his word. Amen. Malachi 3.6, he says, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Number three, God cannot lie. Numbers chapter number 23, verses 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Had he not said it? And shall he not do it? Or had he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Thank God that he's not a man that he should lie. Thank God that because he cannot lie, he is not a respecter of persons. That if somebody can become a billionaire in South Africa, surely somebody can be a billionaire in Kenya. If somebody can be a landowner in America, Surely God is not a respecter of persons. I can be a landowner in Kenya. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, say I'm an owner. Number four, you cannot please God without faith. Hebrews chapter number 11 verses 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those or them that diligently seek him. With faith, your impossible becomes him possible. If you have faith, hallelujah, you can pull down giants. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number 1 verse 17 says this. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Say, I will live by faith. So then we see that the topic of faith is really life and death to the believer. Because we live by faith or we die by doubt. Say, I'm full of faith. Many people are alive, but very few people are living. They are alive because they are born again. And they have the life of Christ. But they are not living because they have not yet discovered how to live by faith. When you discover the life of faith, the life of the Spirit, you become alive. You start to live this life that was intended for you. Let me share something. When I was very young and I got born again, one of the things that kept me from being born again was because I thought that now that I'm saved, at whatever age that I'm saved, before I experience heaven, I have to wait until I die. How many of you felt like that? I felt like that. I thought that I'll only experience heaven when I die. But the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches us that you can experience heaven on earth. You can experience life while you are alive. You can experience the life of heaven. When you tap into the faith realm, you bring heaven down to earth. They said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom on as it is in so where must heaven come where must heaven come heaven must come on earth the person of Jesus Christ will get you into heaven the principles of Jesus Christ will bring heaven down to earth if you can apply the law of faith you can usher in heaven into earth the Bible says that God took Adam and he put him in a garden. 
That garden, the word garden means, one of the meanings speaks of the presence of God. I believe now that that garden is actually in your heart. That wherever you go, you can experience heaven. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can experience heaven. Christian faith is the faith of Jesus Christ. We're not talking motivational speaking and believing as the world teaches it. When we're teaching faith, we're teaching the faith of Jesus Christ. The knowledge and the application of faith will give you the ability to command, to dominate, and to rule your world. Faith is the world dominator. Hallelujah. Commanding your world is exercising dominion. There can never be true dominion without the principle of sowing and reaping. Amen. Are you receiving what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 1 verses 28. When you read from the book of Genesis, you see quite a powerful thing happening here. Number 1. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing, that move it upon the earth. Verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree which is of the fruit of the tree, yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. I want to just open up your mind with what is going on here. Number one, he says, And God blessed them. When God blessed them, he was releasing dominion empowerment Unto Adam and Eve. Amen. He was saying that for what I'm about to call you to do, you need an empowerment from heaven by faith, which is the blessing. Amen. So he blessed them. Number two. He then says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. He was then giving them what I call the dominion mandate. So number one, he gave them the dominion empowerment. The ability to do by the power of God. But number two, he then gives them the mandate on what to do. I submit today that the Lord has given you a mandate to be fruitful. He's given you a mandate to have multiplication. He's given you a mandate to replenish the earth. He's given you a mandate to subdue. And when you put all those together, he's given you a mandate to have dominion. What does that mean? That means that if you get uh, a thousand Kenya shillings, you should multiply it to a hundred thousand Kenya shillings. Oh, come on, Jesus. Help me here. That means that whenever you use your money, you use your time, you use your talent for the purposes of the kingdom and to increase yourself, you should be able to replenish it. You see, the world system, the more you use it, you lose it. But the kingdom system, the more you use it, it multiplies. That's why Jesus said it is better to give than it is to receive. Because you never ever really release anything out of your life. You never really lose anything in the kingdom of God when you release it for the kingdom of God. That's why it is better to give than it is to receive. Because the one that is giving is actually receiving. So number two, he gave them the dominion mandate. But number three, he gave them the dominion process. Did you notice that he said, and God said, behold, I've given you every herb, yield, herb bearing seed. Think of this. God gives empowerment. Then he gives a mandate. Is it not natural then that after you've given a mandate... And you've given an ability that you should then give a process. Does that make sense to you? So in other words, the process of our dominion, hallelujah, is through sowing and reaping. Through sowing and reaping. And I'll talk more about that. We now, as the kingdom of God, are taking our rightful place and our rightful inheritance. The kingdom of God is not about taking sides. 
We are actually here to take over. Oh, I don't know if you heard me. I said we are here to take over. Look at your neighbor, say I'm taking over. We're taking over politically. We're taking over economically. We are taking over in athletics and in sports. We are taking over in the business world. Turn to your neighbor, say I'm taking over. Give them a high five, say let's take over. Romans chapter number 4 verses 13. Listen to what it reads. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abram or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And if ye be Christ, say I am Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. Say I'm Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Do you know what that scripture is saying to you? That scripture is saying that you own the world. That scripture is saying that we, youth, young people, are the landlords of this earth. That scripture is saying there's no need to, to take sides if you own the property. You can never dominate anything that you don't own. God has given us the principles of faith to take our ownership. Amen. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in other words, whenever the word of God comes, faith comes. Because I'm preaching the word of God right now, I declare that your faith is now starting to increase. The more we preach the word, the more the faith level increases. So if faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, that means that the word of God and faith are interchangeable. Because faith comes when the word comes. When the word comes, tell me, what comes? Faith comes. So faith and the word of God are interchangeable. The book of Hebrews chapter number 11 verses 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Isn't it interesting that as God is teaching the epistle of faith, he puts in faith Abel sowing a seed. Isn't it amazing? So in my mind, this is Genesis chapter number 1, 28 onwards, where God is giving mandate, which is faith, and then he's giving process, which is sowing and reaping. Let's read that scripture, interchanging the word faith with the word, the word of God. And interchanging the word, the word of God with the word faith, because I said to you a few minutes ago that faith and the word of God are interchangeable. Watch what happens to the scripture. Work with me. Everywhere you see faith, I want you to read it with me, everybody. I want you to say the word of God. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's on the screen. Now the word of God is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by the word of God... The elders obtained a good report. Through the word of God, we understand that the worlds were framed by faith, which is the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, which is the word of God. By the word of God, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, 
God testifying of his gift and by the word of God, he being dead yet speak it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever the word of God is, faith is. Hallelujah. Faith and the word of God is interchangeable. I simplified this word because young people, when I was young, I always heard preachers talking about faith and I never could grasp what does it exactly mean. But understanding that faith and the word of God is interchangeable, it then gives me a clue that I apply my faith by using the word of God. Hallelujah. According to the Bible, the primary purpose of the use of words is not only to communicate as in talking, but it actually is to create. Say create. Say I create with my words. We actually communicate creation through the spoken word. Communication in its raw sense speaks about conveying, transferring, or sowing of seed. We sow seed in word, in deed, and in power through our words. Turn to your neighbor, say, speak the word. Words are like containers of energy, of power. Words sent to an alternative destination, power that was focused in a central location. I don't know if you got that. If you want to send power, you need to release words. Words are like envelopes of power. Containers of power. Locked up in a word is the power to create. Say, I create through words. Words are power containers. You look at the Bible. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth is without form and void. Then God said. And if you look at the whole chain of thinking and progression, the verses, subsequent verses continue to say, then God said. Then God said. Then God said. And right at the bottom of that, that, that chapter, it says, then God saw that it was good. Well, what did he see? Exactly what he said. Because words to God are creative forces. God has locked up in your tongue the ability to dominate the world. He made us in his image and in his likeness, meaning we are creators just like him. We create with our bodies. That's where we all come about. We create with our minds in imaginations and ideas. But we also create in our words that we release with potential power. According to Hebrews chapter number 11 verses 3, we live in a word-framed world. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. If you don't like the world that you're living in, change the word that you're speaking. Circumstances are only the circle that you stand in and you keep your mouth shut. If you want to get out of a circumstance, step out of the circle that you stand in. How? By the word that you speak. We live in a word-framed world. A word-framed world is a faith-framed world. What you see right now is made by what you cannot see. What you see is a result of your thoughts and your actions and your words. The fastest way to change your thoughts and your actions is the words that you speak. Because words have power. Words have the creative force and nature of God. The quality of a people or a person is determined by the quality of a word that they receive. 
That's why the men of God that have come to this conference have put in their life, their time, their years, and their preparation to give you a value-adding word for your life. Your quality is determined by your quantity and quality of the word that you receive. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your speech. Hallelujah. As preachers, we very much know that we get what we preach for. What you preach as a preacher is what you receive from the people and what people become from what you preach. It's amazing that when God put Adam in the garden, before he gave him work, he, gave him, he told him that there's food to eat, there's a tree to eat from. In other words, before you actually go out and work, you should actually eat first. Because once you eat proper word, you can release proper word, and then you can have a proper life. We get what we preach for. Hallelujah. Words have power. Tell your neighbor that. God created everything using his faith, using his words. Speaking from God's point of view is creation. It's life-giving. It's light revelation releasing. It's power release. It's the operation of faith. Every time God speaks, he's releasing his faith. Every time God says something, he's releasing his words. Because faith and the word of God are interchangeable. In fact, his word was so powerful in John chapter number one, that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And he continues to explain how everything that was created was created in him and for him and through him. Who's him? It's the word. And the word became light. And the light was the life of men. So the light, which is your life, started in the word. If you want to change your life, you need to change your revelation, your light. And when you change your revelation, your light... It's by the quality of word you receive and the quality of word you release. That determines your life. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3.15 says that, 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration of God. Another version says that it's all scripture is God breathed. It reminds me of Genesis when he made Adam. It says that he took him and into his nostrils he breathed. When he breathed into Adam, Adam became alive, a living soul, another speaking spirit. So when he breathed, that means he also spoke. And if he's saying in the word now that all scripture is God breathed, it means that in all scripture is the breath of God, the word of God, the life of God. Hallelujah. Look at Hebrews chapter number 1 verses 2 what it said. It said he had in these days spoke by his own son, his own word, his own faith. Whom he had appointed to be heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. He made the worlds by the word which is his own son. Do you see that? And the word of God is Christ. So the material for creation, he puts it in your Bible. He put the building blocks of your life in a word that you can read and you can speak. Oh Jesus. Take note that in that verses 3 he says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, so Christ is the express image of the person of God. But he's also the word. He's also the word. 
He says this, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't say upholding all things by the power of his word. Did you see that? Did you see that the emphasis is not on the power, but the emphasis is on the word? That he holds everything not by his power, but by his word of his power. I don't know if you're getting this. If you say word of his power, you then make that statement totally unlimited. Because power is always subject to word. An army cannot go to war unless the commander-in-chief gives a word. Come on now. So the word determines and dictates the power. But if he said the power of his word, we'd be limited to thinking only the pastors can heal. Because you're seeing a demonstration of power, but you can't see that the demonstration of power is a result of the word. But when he says the word of his power, he makes it unlimited and freely available to all of us. Because the word of his power, the word determines the power. Not power of his word. When you say power of his word, you make that statement finite and limited. Because power is always limited to word. So in other words, because words are power containers, Power is always subject, or the quantity of power is always subject to the size of the container. So it's one thing in this rainy weather to have a two liter bottle. It's another story to have the whole heavens opened up because you're using the word of his power. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. The word is the source because the word is the expression of the person of God, Jesus Christ. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is God's substance. It's the substance of God because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you can upgrade the quality of your word, you'll upgrade the quality of your life. Turn to your neighbor, say, speak the word. Say, speak the word again. But the word of God is also a seed. And we know that the word of God is a seed. Turn to your Bible to, in fact, you don't have to turn in Matthew chapter number 13. The word of God is a seed. But we said faith and the word of God is interchangeable. So if the word of God is a seed, then faith is also a seed, can be sown. In Matthew chapter number 13, verses 3, and spake many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. This is Jesus talking the parable of the sower. Look at verses 19 in the same chapter 13. It says that when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth not, then cometh the wicked one and catch the way that which was sown in his heart. Notice, it was sown in his heart. But Jesus just said that a, a sower went out and sowed the word. Here's what he said, that this is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. So whenever somebody receives the word, a word is actually being sown to them. So even as I'm preaching the word right now, the word is currently being sown to you. Look at Mark chapter 4 verses number 2. 4 verses number 2. Mark chapter 4 verses 2, it says this. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine... This is Jesus' doctrine. This is Jesus' philosophy. This is Jesus' way of thinking. What, look at his way of thinking. Hearken, listen. Listen carefully. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Smack bang in Jesus' ideological way of thinking is sowing and reaping. Same chapter, verses number 14. The sower soweth the word. Luke chapter number 8, verses 5. Look what it says here. A sower went out to sow his seed. Amen. Look at Luke 8, 11. 
explaining that whole parable, all three of them. Luke chapter number 8 verses 11. Look what it says. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Yes, you can clap your hands. Amen. What have we established? We've established that words are not just idle releases, but words are creative power. We've also now just established that the word of God functions like seed and it can be sown. Just think about this. Jesus, who's the creator of the universe, who is, who was, and who is to come, who exists in the eternal, in the present, in the past, and in the future, explains the principles of the kingdom and of faith in other scriptures as seed to be sown. Isn't that powerful? You know what that tells me, for me personally? It tells me that one of the most powerful principles in the universe is the principle of sowing and reaping. If Jesus, when he's asked about the kingdom, in one, one uh, uh, scripture he says, the kingdom of God is as a man that casted seed. That tells me that sowing and reaping features very high on his agenda. Hallelujah. Sowing and reaping is the will of God. We sow our words when we speak our words. Hallelujah. We sow and we release power when we speak our words. Amen. We sow the word of God by speaking the word of God. We release our faith by sowing our faith. Look at Luke chapter number 17. We release our faith by speaking the word of God. Look at Luke chapter number 17, verses 6 or verses 5. I read it just now. And the apostle said unto Jesus, increase our faith. He would be a crazy man if his answer was not applied to the question of increasing our faith. Look what he says in his answer. And the Lord said... If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, watch what he says next. Ye might say. A person of faith always speaks faith-filled words. Faith is never silent. Faith always speaks. Faith is the function or speaking is the function of a faith-filled life. Give you an example. Jesus said to the disciples, let us go to the other side. He then jumps into the boat and he has a pillow and he sleeps at the lower end of the boat. The disciples start to panic because the wind picks up. The waves pick up. There's a boisterous wind and they even go to the point of saying, Lord, don't you care that we are about to die? God bless you, Bishop. I didn't see you come in. God bless you, sir. Don't you care that we are about to die? Then look what Jesus does. He gets up out of the boat. Remember the scripture just told us there's wind? Told us there's rain? Told us there's a mighty storm? Jesus gets up and he says, peace, be still. He didn't mention the wind. He didn't mention the rain. He didn't mention the storm. He spoke the result. I don't know what situation you're going through right now. But are you telling us about the size of the mountain? Or are you commanding the mountain, get thee into the ocean, be cast out into the ocean? A faith-filled person speaks faith-filled words. 
We were designed to speak just like God. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 2 verse 7, and the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of, the breath of life and man became a living soul. We were made to do exactly what God did. We were made to create with our words. Say, speak the word. I don't know what you're going through, but I think there's a word that you need to speak. If you have a word, then you have a solution. If you can speak the outcome, you will make it through the storm. What word are you speaking? What is your situation? What is the outcome that you want? Hallelujah. Look at this. Adam was made like that. So somebody may be saying in their mind, but Adam fell. And so it means we no longer qualify. The Bible teaches that Jesus, before he ascended, they were all standing in the room. And the Bible says it, and he breathed on them. Isn't that exactly what God did to Adam? He breathed on them. Through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Through the last Adam, our big brother, we have been reinstated to the level and above the level that Adam was. We have that creative ability given back to us. Why? Because we are children of God. We have the same DNA as God. We have the same spiritual flow of life in us, the life of Christ. Romans 8, chapter number 16 says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The book of Acts, chapter 17, 28 says that we are His offspring. An offspring is something that's birthed out of an original being. We are the offspring of God. That means we can speak like God and get results. We can speak ourselves out of our situation. We can speak ourselves into our prosperity. We can sow our faith by the words that we speak. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We have an understanding now that we can speak just like God speaks. We have an understanding that what we say releases the power of God. That we have what we want. If we can see it in the word and you can speak it with your mouth, you can have it. Hallelujah.